Hello all. No, welcome to our uh, interactive session today. Uh, thanks for all people who have made it for the session. So here with us, uh, we have Mr. Vishwas Anand, now who is IM K alumni, as well as uh, the content and communication lead at uh, no Infosys Institute. So I welcome Vishwas Anand uh, to the platform of Krista's discussion. Welcome to you, Vishwas. Uh, thank you for thank you, our, Glad to be here. Yeah, thank thanks you for accepting our invitation. It's a pleasure of uh, all of us to have you on this discussion panel. Uh, as you all uh, know, my dear friends, uh, we have shared Vishwas' profile. You now he is one of the uh, now thought leader in the industry of content marketing, right? Uh, so with a lot of laurels, uh, he has achieved. Uh, we are glad that we are having an interaction session with him. So just to brief you, uh, the session will be of two parts. One, uh, I as a host uh, will uh, go in and interact with Vishwas. We'll ask a few questions to understand his uh, you know, uh, ideas and ideals. And later uh, part of the discussion, we shall have the participants asking questions uh, to interact with Mr. Vishwas. So with that said, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to uh, open the session uh, with my first question. Now, uh, no, I just want to go back to uh, no, old days of uh, no, young hood of uh, Vishwas and ask, Vishwas, can you tell us uh, more about your interest in your student days, in your studenthood? Okay, that's an, <laughs> a very early question which I'll have to go back in time and answer on. But I'll, I'll do my best and I'll try to do justice to it. Uh, I mean, so um, the thank you all for joining. First of all, I mean, uh, amidst all your studies and all the other assignments that you could have uh, taken up, I appreciate uh, all of you joining in. Um, so, okay, coming back to this question, um, see, a lot of times we what what we are passionate about is not really uh, fostered at an early age. That's what I believe because um, uh, we are more attuned to taking parts that we see uh, role models in people that are that surround us so um, uh, i have we had a lot of civil servants in our family we had a lot of uh, lawyers we had uh, uh, people in the my mother also is a doctor so she's uh, currently treating covid patients i mean not really treating but uh, she's she's in the administrative side of things uh, ensuring that testing is done well so Coming back to that, I mean, we've seen our mother, I mean, uh, uh, really, really look out for us in terms of uh, 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 taking care of us and ensuring that the family is together because my father was away at, for the most part. So we had our uncles and uh, they're, they're all from MBA schools as well. So um, uh, in terms of studies, I would say that my interests fairly uh, lied in uh, English, math and science. So. Uh, uh, going through the uh, the, the, the drill of um, having having to understand these subjects, I mean, through different kinds of either tuitions or uh, through uh, my own interest in these subjects. I think uh, what makes a difference is your interest level in, in terms of what you want to pursue because in a country like India, I mean, we, we always choose engineering as a profession first and then we decide to do, decide on what we want to do later. So, that that is a fair uh, assessment of how uh, so it's the decision making is not usually in our hands it's our parents who do that in uh, in terms of fostering this kind of but in terms of nurturing the interest i would credit my mother to really uh, enabling me to uh, pursue what i wanted to do because she didn't really put that pressure on me to become a doctor or become anything else that um, i wanted to be uh, uh, when, when I was very small, because I had aspirations of even becoming a pilot or an astronaut when I was in my in my younger days, and um, those those kind of dreams, I mean, there'll be fascinations uh, when you start off your uh, uh, aspirational journey, but then it it won't be something that will probably take you forward unless you really are passionate about the field uh, as the years go by. So uh, for me, it was more of writing, it was more of um, research, it was more of branding, and these three things actually came together. Uh, in the future, but then I didn't know. I mean, I was as confused as anyone else was in a in a in a place uh, where you you don't know what kind of professions lie ahead. So that that was my early days and my early uh, student days. And then as as it 
as my interest in math science and english grew then i eventually took up engineering and then i realized i mean engineering was a total waste of time i mean no no offense to the college or anything else but uh, it was uh, I, i because i was doing electrical engineering uh, in college and then i uh, ended up coding in a co- in the first company i joined in aditi technologies so and uh, i really dreaded coding as well i wanted to get into the management side of things they didn't have a marketing opening at that uh, job so then i later realized i had to take an mba in order to do that in, in order to get into marketing so uh, despite having the interest in it a lot of times uh, as students we might or as uh, early learners in the professional career you might not have that the right kind of opportunities to grow so you might want to uh, step back and understand where your strengths lie and more importantly where your weaknesses lie because for me i thought of coding as something that i'd want to pursue at the start i wanted to do an ms as well but then two years into my career i later realized that it was it was not getting uh, getting me interested in it and uh, it was not really fetching any kind of uh, satisfaction in terms of uh, what i wanted to do in the in the long term so uh, one is i mean not to not to get bogged down by the short term uh, aspirations it could be even, even in terms of money or fame but then to really go ahead for the long term to go ahead for what you are really passionate about that's what makes a difference uh, to your life so that that's how i would uh, probably end this first question yeah that was really that was really <laughs> nice to hear oh, the connection to this uh, do you suggest that you now career planning uh, should be done at a very early age yeah so i think it's a good question probably now i think see the thing is with um, a lot of our careers they really didn't have um, that kind of guidance we expected so a lot of us can attest to it because in a place like india i mean there are billions of uh, mil- millions of students and uh, it's a huge population we are we are often misguided at times because our families want us to pursue something or um, Uh, relatives want us to pursue something our friends want us to pursue something else our uh, so called godfathers want us to pursue something else so there's a lot of um, the pressure that is put on us at an at an early age and as we progress as well uh, our priorities keep changing our dreams and aspirations also keep changing so uh, as we go ahead in life i think what what we need to do is to first uh, take a step back try to understand and assess the situation for what it is try to assess what what is what are the driving forces towards your career i'm just doing a sound check i, I think i lost pravin pravin can you hear me uh yeah yeah i can hear i can hear okay great 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 i just thought uh, you okay, okay. No, 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 so uh, okay so in terms of um, uh, some sometimes what I, what i was trying to say is in in uh, a lot of times we get misguided by uh, looking at the aspirations and goals of certain people but we are not really attuned or in tune with our own uh, biological clock in tune with our own um, clock of existence that really comes back to how we want to design and how we want to carve out our future and that is not being done enough uh, with the current scenario because unless so this is where the career guidance and assessing your priorities assessing your goals from time to time come in and more importantly i think it's about reassessing those priorities because sometimes you might want to pursue something based on certain factors it can even be external factors but then when when an unbiased opinion or when an unbiased intervention is being done it will always tell you what is on the other side and whether you are pursuing it out of uh, an interest for the short term or out of a long term goal or interest so i think early career interventions play a huge role in that assessment and reassessment yeah. good, good, good. i think i think it was a fantastic answer uh, you know which is very relevant for any student uh, now what is what is your take on internships uh, uh, vishwas if i want to ask you, you now how relevant uh, internships uh, having an industry interaction very closely is uh, necessary for a commerce or a management student that you believe yeah i think it's it's very relevant uh, pravin because um, a lot of times what we learn in academics what we uh, learn through a notebook or 
uh, other kind of classroom learning is not often practiced i would say because uh, you see in a commerce background in a uh, in an purely academic background where you can take your notes to market uh, that would probably be a career where you can still take elements of your academic life uh, forward but in terms of um, uh, really uh, attuning yourself to the future in terms of um, making way for your talent to really emerge and to also have a sounding board uh, against which your abilities are really uh, pushed to uh, to the bar i think an internship really plays that kind of a significant role because it gives the employer the ability to really assess you as a person to to see what you bring to the table to see what kind of value you add based on uh, it may needn't be your academic strengths alone it can be other different skills like your interpersonal skills it can be like um, your ability to bounce back from failures because not everything in the corporate world is as fancy as it seems to be because uh, Uh, there are a lot of setbacks a lot of um, uh, scenarios you'll have to encounter which which is not often taught at uh, management schools i mean being from an im itself i i can tell you i mean a lot of scenarios we are facing are entirely new this whole covid is unprecedented uh, at best so we 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 don't know what is to come and an internship at least gives you that kind of glimpse into the future of a corporate at the same time i would advise against looking at an inter- internship as purely Uh, a benchmark of uh, looking at sorry yeah okay go ahead go ahead yeah so uh, at the same time i i would say that uh, it's it's an internship would, would just give you that kind of glimpse into the future it would it it would give you that kind of evaluation point for an employer to really understand whether the right fit in terms of skills match and mismatch can, can happen at the best case scenario it can be a win win for the um, for the employer and the prospective employee you could also have other kinds of pre placement offers that could uh, be given uh, in case of a promising employee uh, who's done well at internships but at the same time i mean looking at internships pure as a pure play way of uh, uh, understanding a corporate is probably not not the right way ahead it would be just a glimpse i would say into the future because why i asked this question is so one of our uh, usp at cresta is uh, you no know, undergoing internships now it is compulsory for every student to take up internship in the right, right. summer and uh, winter uh, vacations uh, you no know, uh, apart from doing many projects uh, activities you no know, we do a lot of other activities like coffee shop exercise we send them out they can they collect data they assist them they present in the classes so apart from this we try to connect them to industry for the purpose of internship uh no no i if i go ahead and ask you, you no know, can you suggest what would be the you know five or 10 top careers you uh, know as a management and uh, commerce students would aspire for being uh, no having a bachelor degree of this course see uh, a lot of times uh, pravin i mean uh, the thing is um your interest levels could vary after uh, after they take up even commerce and management like for instance i'll give you my own example i mean uh, uh, say i was not i was not cut out for finance finance was definitely not my cup of tea during management uh, schooling okay. so uh, i wanted to get into marketing and i i was quite clear that i wanted to do b2b marketing and uh, the uh, the scenario was that most of the companies that came to campus were all into b2c marketing so you had the huls come into campus you had uh, a lot of uh, companies that are doing pure play sales kind of roles and all that so i was really not keen on such roles so uh, what what i would suggest is i mean uh, in, instead of looking at it as a career path looking at one uh, one career path i would say that let an individual decide for themselves uh, what kind of career they are uh, most suited for but some and Uh, giving undue i mean uh, importance to the conventional route is also not something that uh, that would be fair um, so let let the student decide because see when i entered into the content marketing space there was hardly anyone there was there were no live examples i could really see in the market to understand the game how how the game was played and i had to build a team from the ground up i had to build this practice from the ground up and then i later realized that 
it's it's important uh, at 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 one point i was even wondering i mean I, all my friends are into mba doing finance uh, all into finance roles management consulting kind of roles sales roles and then what to my doing here and and i i later realized i mean it's it's not just that i mean uh, money and fame can only get you somewhere but in order to sustain i think it's your passion that needs to come out so i would say even go for the un- unconventional careers like uh, if you want to become an artist after after an mba go ahead and do that if you, because there's so many writers out there who are uh, who have pursued mba uh, there are so many uh, people who have started their own firms to become entrepreneurs in their own right so there there's, there there are new and creative ways of uh, looking at it so i wouldn't really pick, pick a top 10 i would say um, let the individual decide for themselves correct correct so uh, this question is always there in mind see many people will tell uh, they want to do mba they want to become a management uh, post graduate so my question to you is do can you suggest our students uh, what are the alternatives other than doing mba in mass degree because most of them would end up in mcom or mba as i have seen in the trend uh, no people and try to end up in these two courses largely can you suggest any other courses for the no master degree for a master degree is it yes. see i i mean a lot of people do an mba and then they decide uh, it's mba is a very generic course so uh, if you want to do an mba you can do it and then probably decide whether um, maybe journalism suits you maybe uh, finance you want to specialize in finance suits you so instead of doing an mba if you can identify if finance suits you just just go ahead and become a uh, do a ca course or do a uh, masters of finance from any top rated university so uh, it, it all depends on whether you want to specialize in something you have the clear cut uh, goals in mind or if you want to pursue something even after an mba that that mba gives you a platform to pursue something bigger so that that serves as a good launching pad for your career so either way i mean there are people like chetan bhagat who been in the mba field but then become writers at the same time um, there are people um, who uh, who probably later uh, realize in life that okay this is what i want to do but then there's no right or wrong it's it's working according to their time zone and um, uh, going for something that they are really passionate about okay, okay. that's nice that's nice so uh, i think uh, you know uh, you have called most of the answers that i wanted to uh, ask you the questions for okay. uh, so i think uh, it's it's a time to the participants to uh, also okay. to interact with you as i told uh, you know before while beginning this uh, discussion uh, so can we have questions from the participants sure sure yeah uh, guys you can ask questions to vishwas uh no he would answer your question kindly ask one after the other i hope uh, no shrinivasan sir is there to there for the first question uh, shrinivasan sir thank you uh, very much uh, pravin uh, for inviting me to talk first and Uh, very well insight given by uh, mr vishwa vishwas anand and uh, very Thank good you. interaction yes and it's a very in, 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 uh, informative interaction what you had uh, going to whatever it is uh, all right now you said the i mean mba is a platform for uh, the students to move forward there are a lot of people who don't a lot of students who don't want to do mba um, but they mm-hmm. want to do they want to choose something else what do you suggest yes sir uh, i i think i mean uh, a lot of students uh, if, if mba is not cut out for them like my my own example is that i had to do an mba in order to get into marketing because in my company aditi technologies uh, the first company i worked in i was only into coding so uh, i wanted to really get out of coding in order to uh, get into marketing and then there were no vacancies for quite a while for almost 6 months that i had waited for and then uh, realized that it's only an mba that's going to fetch me uh, a marketing role so in case it comes to that then probably an mba could be that uh, platform but in case uh, you can demonstrate or the company gives you that opportunity then you don't even need an mba you could probably start off because i've seen people who don't even have degrees they've done uh, very well for themselves so 
uh, if you want to specialize maybe understand uh, the, the level of specialization maybe do a, uh, a masters in marketing itself if marketing is your forte you don't have to get into other streams uh, you can really you know, do a marketing uh, program uh, in management uh, or or a marketing course itself nowadays uh, with the mooc learning with the online learning i think a lot of certifications people can also uh, aspire to get so um, probably identify the interest level in the specific area and get these certifications but at the same time i mean uh, how well these certifications are also perceived in the market is is what uh, needs to be changing in the market scenario as well because they need to really recognize that these certifications are, uh, are not only uh, online certifications that that can be treated with such uh, with uh, a non serious attitude but then employers also need to uh, understand that uh, the market is changing and uh, the gig economy is going to also going to pick up where people can also uh, pursue many professions at one go and try to um, take short stints in uh, different courses so both in terms of courses and in terms of employment things are radically changing in that in that space so uh, identifying the right kind of course identifying the right kind of uh, um uh, uh, achievement uh, that you want to have in the next 5 years uh, maybe in the short term but then of course looking at it from a long term perspective is really key to understanding where you want to uh, go ahead in life so right right platform right you right, rightly said um, i'm sure that students are listening to it and uh, taking it uh, uh, taking taking note of it and uh, yes i'm sure going, your going experience forward. will also <laughs> help all the students sir <laughs> uh yes in fact uh, me being an mba myself and i also suggest the same thing for all the students okay. because mba is a key key for all the uh, activities irrespective of where you want to be and uh, that takes forward in whatever direction they want to take it irrespective of uh, uh, what they want to do in the near future or the later mm-hmm. later part of their life uh, that's what okay. i also suggest in fact i mentor yes, students yes. in the same line as well all right okay. thank you very much uh, vishwas thank anand you. and okay. i will leave it to okay. ravin to take it forward Yes, sure, thank sure. you very much for the question and the, you know, uh, an awesome response for that. Uh, yeah, uh, I will go back to the participants again. Uh, does any of you have any other questions to ask to Vishwas? You can go ahead. i'm not uh, just to uh, clarify i'm not going to admonish anyone there are no right or wrong <laughs> questions so <laughs> yeah students have complete liberty to ask it only be a learning it i'll i'll also learn from you in 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 terms of a lot of other things yeah Uh, yeah, students. I think uh, you need to come forward and ask questions because, as Vishwas Anand said, it's a learning they are, process. They are hesitant. Or, don't uh, don't worry. Yes, um, it is. It is not the question of. Uh, you should not so, hesitate because, as you know, yeah. um, it's always there's a saying: if you have one rupee with you and one rupee with me, and I give that one rupee to you and you give that one rupee to me, we end up share, having the same one rupee yes. with each other. Yes, very true. Share the knowledge. <laughs> if i have one knowledge and you share you have one knowledge mm-hmm. and we start sharing each other's knowledge and we have yes. two knowledge each right two ideas true, true. so let's come forward uh, students and let's talk about uh, your questions and then take yes. another uh, you can add knowledge to vishwas anand and add, add knowledge to others also we have about 40 i think move forward students yeah we mean take it over take it over yeah, yeah okay then then i have last question to you vishwas uh no okay. uh, no you have seen life as a student you have seen life as a you no know, a, a person who has done post graduation has you no know, has been working in a top uh, organization in the uh, global market so uh, my simple question to is what are the habits or practices that we have you no know, every day uh, one should have you no know, has a habit to develop as a student Uh, early habits okay so uh, some of the some of the, uh, the best habits i feel is is, is to keep a routine uh, uh, pravin because um, a lot of times as a student we get we get bogged down by so many assignments we get bogged down by the the number of uh, the unpredictable nature of uh, things uh, and it's it's all in the mind i feel i mean uh, you can you can be the best of uh, you can be at the best of your uh, 
a pace. You can be at the best of your abilities, but then uh, you can still get bogged down by a number of external factors uh, that can play in. Because we have seen it, uh, it all comes down to uh, placements. We have seen some of the best of students academically who do uh, really well, and then they don't get placed in the first company that comes into campus. And that that's like, like it's it's not and it's not really a reflection of their abilities or lack of it, but rather it's 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 a reflection of where they want to go in life. So it, they may not be really suited to it. And I believe it's all it all boils down to destiny. So uh, how you are as a person and how you uh, will become and the, the right kind of opportunity match and mismatch that happens um, is is all a play uh, that you'll have to understand and take lessons from. So uh, that 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 would be my uh, way of putting it. So the best of abilities will be about persistence and having a strong integrity to whatever you're doing. Because I've seen as a student, I mean, a lot of times, um, just to bring in an example, there are people who uh, still copy during exams. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying uh, when, when you're doing such things and later uh, such people uh, might get into a corporate and start uh, taking credit for another's work, then it, it, it leads to Patterns of behavior that don't really augur well for both yourself and the organization you work in. So don't create patterns of behavior that uh, uh, that that could lead you into trouble. So do things on the other hand that could lead you to develop a lot more persistence, a lot more discipline in your routine. I used to wake up uh, very early, probably the only one in my uh, batch that used to wake up uh, by 4:30 a.m. in in an IAM. <laughs> And have breakfast on a um, uh, almost every day, and and having breakfast every day used to be seen as a as a big achievement for people because you'll find that the people who uh, are the late uh, uh, late risers, who, yeah, so uh, who miss it almost every day. So I think uh, having that discipline routine really helped me uh, achieve a lot of my goals, help me clarify a lot of my thoughts in my mind, and uh, staying away from some of the other habits like smoking, drinking is what I wouldn't. Uh, I would I would advise against so in case case of habits I think habits really develop a person into what you want to be and um, what you want to sustain yourself to be as well you can achieve all the success you can up to a certain point but then what will take you to that point may not take you to the next level because your habits can really destroy you as a person thank you thank you that was really a nice yeah. uh, example and uh, to no even to come, before I conclude so what are the recent trends in content marketing that you have observed, Vishwas? Recent trends. Okay. So uh, some of the trends would be one is video and podcasts are taking over. So uh, a lot of com companies and a lot of institutions are taking on um, podcasts these days. So they want to, uh, voice is, has become, voice commerce is actually uh, getting, uh, getting a huge market share. Uh, in the recent past and then it's it's also looking at uh, booming also in the future so in terms of um, content marketing i feel content marketing hasn't picked up to the extent it could in in a, in a place like india because in, in, the, uh, in the us it was probably spoken about uh, in the last 10 years as well but um, in terms of how content marketing is picked up it's not really done justice to the kind of organizations that have uh, really spanned uh, content marketing because if you look at it content marketing is not is, is still created or content is created in an ad hoc fashion and pe most companies have not really moved up that maturity curve to really measure ROI out of their con content marketing efforts so I think in terms of um, revenue reputation uh, they really need to uh, work on these aspects um, uh, the, uh, at the same time, I mean, a lot of growth hacking is, is being spoken about uh, right now. So th this could be a trend using thought leadership itself to influence um, uh, buyers to take uh, take them through uh, a digital storytelling plot. So it's not now um, most, most companies are into digital publishing, but they don't understand that digital storytelling is the new game. And to raise the game in digital storytelling with every new story and connect the dots along the way. So that is one change. Thank you, thank you. Uh, with this said, uh, thank you, Vishwas. It was really an insight, insightful session for all of us. No, uh, I'm very personally very happy to connect to you. I uh, know I'm very delighted because all the participants get to uh, know, interact with these uh, uh, know, people from corporate uh, through our Presta platform. I'm very happy that you connected to us. Uh, we are glad we had your session.
so on behalf of the shah knowledge foundation and cresta school of management and all my uh, friends and uh, colleagues here and along with my students i thank you for being an invitee and uh, delivering this interactive session for all of us my pleasure it was really nice connecting i welcome you to the campus anytime right when sure I, praveen i i would have loved to come to the campus actually and give this you're, given you're the situation welcome. yeah most welcome yes sir. so thank you all for attending this session uh, so looking forward for more such sessions uh, through our regular interactions thank you vishwas and you can always feel free to reach out to me at any time you sure. can connect with me on linkedin you can always uh, any of your students can always feel free to reach out or sure, i would i would share your email id to them sure sure thank you thank you all thank you all thank you waiting pravin thank, thank you let's uh, thank you dr dinivasan as well thank you thank you thank you vishwas uh, very insightful information what you shared and i'm sure that it will benefit the students of cresta and thank all you, others sir. listening uh, listening in this platform thank you very much thank you so much thank you okay all. okay